could have done hit nobody. And they say panic of the minus four. Think through my mind. Speak through my vocal cords. None of me, all of you. I declare every heart anointed to receive and every ear anointed to hear. In Jesus' name we pray. All that agree said. So we've been talking about maturing emotionally. Now, all of you understand that man is a, you possess a, and you live in a, so your body grows up, right? I don't look the same way I looked when I was nine years old, okay? That would be weird, right? But your emotional part or your soul part can remain paused if you're not careful. And I want to talk to you guys about that. And this whole series is entitled Grownish, but it's talking about growing up from a soulish standpoint or from an emotional standpoint. I use the example of how you never grow past your age of injury until you deal with that injury, which means you can see a 43, 45, 46 year old man or woman, and at age they're 46, 45, right? But emotionally, they're 12. Emotionally, they're 15. Emotionally, they're 16 because there's unresolved issues that took place when they were younger that they have yet to deal with. So now when they interact with people or they are dealing with this person or dealing with that person, that person is getting the injured version of them. Does that make sense? Clap one time if that makes sense. So I want to make sure that we talk about these things. So. Some uh, a few weeks ago, I shared 10 things uh, or 10 signs that you are uh, emotionally mature, that you're maturing emotionally. The first one is, you know, you're maturing emotionally when you see that you are being flexible. So I did a message about three weeks ago called the big flex. Number two was, you know, you're maturing emotionally when you take ownership and responsibility. So uh, I did a message about two weeks ago. I think it was called I take full responsibility. If you hadn't seen them. Go back and go watch those messages because all of these are part of the whole dynamic of maturing emotionally, okay? So today, the third one is you know you're maturing emotionally when you understand that you don't know everything. Now, this message is a little different because it's coming from a perspective that's kind of controversial, okay? Um, how many of you know know-it-alls? You got to know it all in your circle. You got to know it all at school or something like that. You like it? How's that working out for you? You like know-it-alls? Why not? Why don't you like know-it-alls? Because they think they know everything. Okay. Why else? Why don't people like know-it-alls? They feel like they're the center of attention. That's an awesome perspective. I didn't even look at it that way, but yeah, okay. Why? They don't know how to take responsibility for their actions. Expound on that a little bit for me. They won't admit it. They'll try to justify it. Okay, who else? Say that one more time, baby. They always belittle your opinion. Wow. That's a good one. And it is so true, isn't it? Clap one time if you agree with that. Hmm. So I want to go into some, uh, you know, it's not going to be a long message, but I want to make sure that I at least provoke the thinking. I have to change the way you think, because if you're mindful of it, when you encounter it, it won't affect you like it would if you didn't know how to articulate it. Does that make sense? You ever been in a situation with your parent and you know something is wrong, but you don't know how to articulate what's wrong and it's very frustrating because they're, hey babe, look at you. You didn't look like that before I left the house. You did something, you just had a wrap around or something when I left. Look at you. It's our 19th anniversary today, guys. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to preach this message, and we're going to go have some fun. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Ain't God good? All right. I ain't going to do that uh, creepy youth pastor thing. But uh, <laughs> what was I saying? Oh, when you and your parents are going through something, 
and you know what you're going through, but you don't know how to articulate it. Isn't that a frustrating feeling? Well, the same thing happens when you're dealing with somebody that is a know-it-all because they have their opinion and you have your opinion. And when you're trying to talk to somebody <coughs> who is pretty set in stone on their opinion, how many of you know that's an unnecessary conversation to have? It's, go it's not going to do nothing but cause a whole bunch of what? Frustration, aggravation, right? Uh, I think the Golden State Warriors is the best basketball team on the planet. Wavy Davy or Wavy Brady, right? You'll say, what? Who's your favorite team? Who? Really? I mean, but really, though? Suns and Six. You think so? You're very, you're very confident in that. Okay. Okay. Who was you going for last night as far as, did you know about Tank Davis and Ryan Garcia? Who was you going for? You was going for Tank? I knew people that was going for Ryan Garcia. People were betting millions of dollars on this guy. Right? Everybody just knew Ryan Garcia. Do y'all know who these people are that we're talking about? Okay. They just knew he was going to beat the brakes off of this dude. If you didn't see it, he got knocked out. Seventh Brown. Gut shot. Boom. Uh, he took a knee. Anyway, let's go ahead and get into this because I need you guys to understand just how important it, it is to understand that it's okay if you don't know anything. There's a benefit in it. And I'm going to give you four benefits today of why it's beneficial to not know everything. You ready to dive into this? Clap one time if you're ready. Let's go to Proverbs 28 and 26 in the message version. Proverbs 28 and 26 in the message version. It says, if you think you know it all, you're a fool for sure. Real survivors learn wisdom from others. That's pretty self-explanatory, isn't it? I didn't say that. That's not my opinion. What's that? Bible, right? Proverbs 28, 26, in the message version. If you think you know it all, you're a fool for sure. Real survivors learn wisdom from others, okay? So when people with different opinions are convinced that they, uh, uh, that what they think is the authority, division and strife will occur. When you think you're right, and you think you're right, like uh, in the world, you know, from a political, a political standpoint, you have Republicans and you have uh, Democrats, right? So everybody from a Republican standpoint, anything Democrat is like, oh, that's wrong. It, it, I don't care if it's feeding the hungry. I don't care if it's, you know, giving people stimulus checks. I don't care if it's, uh, you know, uh, putting uh, athletic centers and the, the communities and different things like that, if it's something on the Democratic side, I don't care how good it is, the Republicans are going to say what? Yeah, we're not with that. That's the dumbest thing I've ever seen before in my life. What are you doing? Oh, my goodness, it is so exhausting arguing with people that are just so set in their ways or set in their opinion because they feel that they are the authority when it comes to the topic that you're talking about. It's a very frustrating thing. Here's a word to the wise. And who are the wise? You guys are the wise. Here's a word to you guys. Stop going back and forth with people. You know one of the things that I've learned to do and it really pisses my friends off, right? When they go, hey man, it's like this. And I go, no it's not. Yes it is. And I go, oh man, you know what? My bad. When I think about it, it is, it is. And they go, are you being facetious? No, no, I'm agreeing with you. It makes them upset when I agree with them. So I just agree quickly with my enemy. You know where I get that from? Huh? The Bible. Agree quickly with your adversary. Stop doing all that going back and forth. You see, the Bible gives you a, a, a pretty straightforward swag if you read it. It tells you, why are you going back and forth with people like that? It also says, stop casting your pearls upon swine, which means if I take an expensive pearl and I throw it at a pig, the pig isn't going to look at that pearl as a very priceless object. It's going to look at it as what? A what? A rock, a threat, like you're trying to hurt it, right? So it, it tells you. Stop casting your pearls upon swine. 
Young people, stop going back and forth with people who still trying to learn like you still trying to learn. It's okay to have different opinions. Here's the thing you got to learn to do. You got to learn how to disagree agreeably. Amen. Clap one time if that makes sense. You have to learn how to disagree agreeably. It'll save you a lot of frustration, a lot of unnecessary uh, sleepless nights because you're thinking, you know, you're good people. How many of you have ever lost sleep thinking about something or argument that you've had with one of your friends? How many of you have ever been in that situation? Yeah, because a lot of times the argument ain't even have to happen because all it took was for you to go, you know what, is this even worth the argument? Is this even worth my time and going back and forth with this person? I love you. So I'd rather just take the low road or take the high road and just go, oh, man, yeah, yeah, that's cool. Every opinion does not have to be stated. Every Thing that's said to you doesn't require a response. How many of you have ever allowed something to come out your mouth and then thought about it afterwards and then you went to yourself, I ain't really even had to say that. Or I knew this about this one person and I said it to another friend in confidence, right? I said it to him like, all right, now you, what, what they say? You got to promise not to tell nobody. On God, man, that's between me and you, right? Man, but Carrie, man, he, he was acting. Wait a minute. Carrie trusted you with this. You just went and did this, and now all of a sudden, the person that you said, man, don't tell nobody this between me and you, that person went and did the same thing, but the person that they told it to wasn't on the whole trying to keep it to myself. They don't even really rock with that person like that. So they go, I heard such and such say, before you know it, you being attacked, you being confronted about something that should have never been said in the first place. When I was young, I used to have this philosophy, not saying it was the right philosophy, but it's like, if you don't want it repeated, don't let it come out your mouth. Did you hear what I said? If you don't want it repeated, keep it to yourself, right? Now I'm talking about that. Let's give some balance to that. So that's like with your friends and different things like that. If you have a friend that's getting ready to harm themselves, tell it. You'll thank yourself later. Trust me. Or, you know, you got to be able to uh, read the room or read the situation. Amen. Um, Let's go to 1 Corinthians 13 and 12 in the New Living Translation. Let me make sure. Y'all see y'all back there with the scriptures? 1 Corinthians 13 and 12, New Living Translation. It says, now we see things imperfectly like puzzling reflections in a mirror. But then we will see everything with perfect clarity. All that I know now is partial and incomplete, but then I will know everything completely, just as God now knows me completely. What is that scripture saying? It's saying it's okay if you don't know everything, but it's even better when you know the one that does. Amen? Let's go ahead into these benefits. Four benefits, all right? Four benefits of not knowing everything. Number one, it's good that we don't know it all because it has a way of keeping us humble. What is what is humility? I'm gonna help you out. It's trusting, relying, and depending on God. Pride, opposite of humility, is trusting, relying, and depending on self. How many of you ever had a family member that passed away? Yeah. You miss them? Yeah, of course you do. Right? You love them. You miss that you can't interact with them anymore and different things like that. On the obituary, when you get the obituary, when you get the program, right, it says sunrise, and sunrise represents what? Huh? When they were born, right? And then there's a little... What do you call it? Just a dash. Then there's a dash, which represents their life. And then it says sunset. And sunset represents what? Everybody in here knows their birthday, right? What if you knew the day you were going to die? How would you live your life? Would life hit the fan? Why? Say that again, baby. Why? 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 
scared all the time. Why are you scared? value your time more. Hmm. Okay. Why don't you value your time now? You know time is one of your most valuable assets. Do you know that once time is gone, it's not something that will ever come back? Did you also know that life isn't something that you could just hit rewind on and go back and, you know, I'm gonna do it, get a reover, or this this ain't uh what's the boot what's the uh, game, Call of Duty where you could just respawn, right? This ain't that. Or uh, I was thinking about Fortnite. You can't just respawn in this life. In this life, once you're gone, you're gone. But if we knew everything, right? I just feel like it'd just be a, it'd just be chaotic, for me, as a 41 year old man. Lord forbid, but. If I had the, the wisdom that Anthony Adams is going to die on this day at this time, <laughs> what? All I would, I would, my life would be consumed with what? That day, right? Because it doesn't stop the things that are happening in my life. My kids just went to the prom yesterday. Me and my wife got to see our, our babies go off to the prom and get all dressed up and you know, help my son with his tie and give him my expensive cologne. No, nah, don't put on that stuff. Put on, come on in my room. We're going to get the good stuff today. Not the uh, CVS stuff, right? Not the Ross or the, uh, uh, what's the other, the, you know, not the department store cologne. This good stuff here. It's just going to boom, boom, boom. You don't need a lot because it's going to last you all night. So I promise, you know, and we, we go out and we, we, we buy the expensive shoes and expensive belt. We make sure he's listening and we go to baby girl and we make sure she's right and different things like that, right? I would hate that knowing the day that I'm going to not be here anymore. I wouldn't even be able to enjoy it like that because I'm always thinking, how will I enjoy it? Right? Could you imagine knowing everything? Think about dating, right? You know she's going to say, I don't want to go with you. But why? And you know she's going to say, because you're ugly, right? You don't even want to talk to girls because you know there's just something about the, the mystery of it, the, 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 the chase of it. Am I right? Clap one time if you agree. It's crazy out here. But these know-it-alls, there's something just amazing about not knowing it all. And when you're okay with that, you start maturing emotionally. Amen. So the first benefit is it's good that we don't know it all because it keeps us humble. It keeps us trusting God. I want to do first Corinthians eight, one through three in the New Living Translation. Watch this. First Corinthians eight. One through three in the New Living Translation. Start with verse one. Now, regarding your question about food that has been offered to idols, yes, we know that we all have knowledge about this issue. But while knowledge makes us feel important, it is love that strengthens the church. See? Anyone who claims to know all the answers doesn't really know very much. But the person who loves God is the one whom God recognizes. Okay? Go back to verse 1. Now, regarding your question about food that has been offered to idols, yes, we know that we all have knowledge about this issue. But while knowledge makes us feel, everybody say feel. But while knowledge makes us feel important, It is love that strengthens the church. Do you see what he just said in the scriptures? It's not a whole bunch of knowledge that builds up the church. What is it? What is it? What is it? That's why the world is the way it is today. We're living in perilous times where people have become lovers of themselves instead of each other. 
You have to be mindful of the tricks and strategies of the enemy. He wants to dumb relationships down. Everyone is considered a best friend nowadays. Back in my day, it was like, oh, that was a big deal. Don't Everybody just ain't called my best friend. Everybody's a BFF today. You got like eight, nine of them, right? And we already went through the whole relationship situation, right? As far as uh, inner court, out of court, holies of holies, right? But when you look at things from that standpoint, it's like, oh, my goodness, what's happening? What Love has been watered down. Love has been something that has been has become just a word that we use and it doesn't have the substance that it used to have. You see, love is not a just a feeling. It's a person and his name is Jesus. But when you try to use love just from the feeling standpoint or just from the emotional standpoint, you're going to find yourself being pretty much aligned with that scripture that says there's a way that seems right but leads to what? Destruction. You have to be careful because the enemy is hiding in plain sight and trying to, uh, what's the word we say when we're trying to uh, copy something? Dupe, right? Everything is dupe, right? God has his way and the enemy comes and he dupes it, right? Dupe. So he's duping this, he's duping that. Everything is being copycat. Everything, none of it is original. None of it is organic. And young people are falling for it. And it ain't just you guys. Some of your parents are falling for it too. You get caught up in the views. You get caught up in the likes. How many people responded to this post that I just posted? Not many? Okay, so does that mean God's love for you has changed? No. How many people have supported me and bought one of my t-shirts? Uh, how many people have come to my service? How many people have done this? How many people have done that? As if those things are uh, 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 insinuation of God's love for you. No, God's love for you is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. But the enemy is out here putting all types of dupes out here, all types of imposters and perpetrators and uh, things that look like this and things that look like that, and they're all impersonated. I need you guys to... Understand the real when you see it. Notice the real when you see it. Notice the real when you hear it. You understand what I'm saying to you? The only way you do that is from getting in your word, understanding it, spending time with it. So when it, the fake comes around, it's easy to identify. Does that make sense? Clap one time if that makes sense. Number two, it causes us to take life one day at a time. Most young people, especially by the time they become juniors and seniors, have this high level of anxiety that comes. And this anxiety comes because you have a slick fear of what's next. Okay, I know I want to go to college, right? I know I want to go to college, but when I get there, okay, I've been sheltered all this time. I never really experienced, you know, girls may say, I never really experienced talking to boys because my mom and dad, they sheltered me from all that. So will they, will, will I even know what to say? Will I look like a dork when I get out there? Or how will I, how am I going to pay bills? I see my mom doing it and it's usually I have my mom to go to. But ever since I was like 12 years old, they keep telling me as soon as I turn 18, as soon as I turn 18 and I'm raising you for this and I'm raising you for that. Well, I'm finally at the that that they've been raising me for, and I, I don't think that I'm ready to cross over this threshold into young adulthood. Clap one time if that makes sense. It's okay. I'm telling you, be easy. Pump the brakes a little bit. Life's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Take it one day at a time. Relax. Rest. Jesus is finished work for your life. It's going to be okay, I promise you. It's not that bad. How you know? I had to go through it. Are you kidding me? I left the house when I was 17 years old. Right? How many of you in here are 17 years old? Can you imagine leaving the house today? Be honest. Be, 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 uh, he's talking about some slick, yeah. That's what I said. But I was, you know, different. You know, I'm like, damn, bump that. I'm, I'm jumping off the porch. I'm gone. You know, me and my mom didn't have the best relationship, so I left for the wrong reasons. I didn't. She said, I you know, they give you that ultimatum, right? 
either you do what I tell you to do or what? Get out. What I say? All right, bet. <laughs> I'm gone then. Let it be known then. I packed my bags and I was gone. When he got me an apartment over there in Riverdale and they approved it, I was like, okay, dang. They ain't even really checked my background because you're supposed to be 18. I'm like, I'm 17. I had like three, four months before I was supposed to turn 18. I was like, okay. So, so I can just sign right here and j you just need this money? Okay, and I did it. I got my first praise. And I was still like 14 emotionally. Right? <laughs> can I be honest with you? Can I just keep, keep it real with you? So I got my apartment. Right there on uh, 138, Belmont Cross, right? Right around the corner from uh, Riverdale High School. And, you know, my dad got me some furniture, said, all right, you're going to do it. Here's, here's how we help you. Boom, here's some furniture. My mama came and bought me a whole bunch of groceries. We went to BJ's and we got all that. I had a roommate. And we're like, all right, man, this is crazy. I'm doing it. So my first day in my apartment, I'll never forget it. I'm trying to figure out what it's like to be grown. So I'm making my first decision as an adult, right? So I wake up that morning, and I'm like, all right, let me straighten up. And I find myself doing all of the things that I hated doing at my mom's house. I'm cleaning up. My uh, roommate has some dishes or something. I'm like, hey, bro, don't need just leaving stuff all over the place. He's trying to keep stuff clean. And I paused. I said, oh, she, she done came up in my house, and I don't even know her. She ain't even here, and I'm doing the same thing I used to get aggravated with her about. So then I was like, okay, well, we're going to switch this up a little bit, right? I invited my friends over, right? Now, I'm 17 years old, so my friends are like my age. And for a 17-year-old to have their own place fully furnished, and a car is unheard of. So when they come to my house, they treat my house like it's a what? Huh? Like it's what? No, not like it's my mom's house because they know this is, this is my spot. Like it's a what? Like it's a freaking bando. You understand what I'm saying? They coming in. I'm like, hey, man, take your shoes off. I know you for real, bro, for real, bro. You switching up already. They coming in, they bringing drugs into the house, they bringing girls into the house, and for a minute there, I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute, no, 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 and what did I end up doing? I conformed. So before you knew it, all these cars is pulling up every day, every day. I got highly addicted to drugs, doing drugs every day, every day food that my parents blessed us with and my roommate's parents blessed us with once it was gone it was like okay because a month ain't long how many of you know 30 days don't take long right and what comes after 30 days when you got your own place huh uh rent's due on the first right that's an old friday movie anyway so i'm like oh shoot I ain't get no job. <laughs> that is so stupid. So I said, how the heck we going to pay the rent? She said, we got to go do something. Being from Godby Road, I did what I knew to do when you don't have a job. Right? Did it for about a year and a half. Never got caught. Paying the bills, paying the rent, paying the bills. Uh, car insurance, cell phone, clothes, I'm living it up until I wasn't. How many of you know sin is like candy on a blade? It makes you give, it gives you the feeling. See, see, sin deals with your feeling, your soul part, right? So it was like candy on a blade, man. I'm sitting there and I'm, you know, man, dude, man, I was high every day, kicking it, got a new girl every day. Boom, I'm kicking it, man. You know, man, this is the life, man. You know, and different things like that. And then it caught up with me. We were going out trying to pay the bills and ended up getting caught. 
and then he got caught. It's one of those things where it's like, okay, yeah, we're going to hide your behind, your little pretty light-skinned self. We're going to put your butt in Clayton County, and we're going to hide you for a while. And I'm like, what? I can't do this. What's going on, you know? And things just didn't go my way. But before you knew it, I lost myself. I didn't even know who I was. I would look in the mirror and physically didn't recognize myself. My lips was blue from all the weed I was smoking. Blue? I thought they were supposed to be black. I'm like, yeah, mine was blue, right? It was like a, like a violet, like a blue jean type of blue, you know? My face getting all drawn in because I'm not just doing weed. I'm doing everything they brought over to the house, right? Um, my health was declining. By this time, I'm, what, 19, 18, 19? Yeah. All types of stuff. But when I look in the mirror and I look at myself, I'm like, why don't I look like what we used to make fun of? I'm starting to look like a Jeff. Y'all know what a J is? No? Huh? Who said it? Who said Jeff? Exactly. See, he, he, he you know, he, he grew up around 80s babies, you know? Started looking like a junkie. And I was a junkie who was a, vi I was a violent junkie. But when I got caught for doing all of the things that I was doing, man, I got caught up to a place where it was like, <sighs> Lord, I know I know you, and I know I messed up. But if you get me out of this situation, going back to the context of this message, what if I knew I was going to get locked up? Would I have done the things that I did? Those things that I went through, are part of the reason why I'm here today preaching to you the way that I preach to you. Teaching you the way that I teach you. My mistakes. My poor decisions. Running right up face to face with God's grace. God's grace said, I see you in this pit that you done fell into. You ready to come out? Because I ain't put you there. You put you there. With your anxiousness to leave your home, your anxiousness to leave the training that your parents were trying to give you, your anxiousness to want to do your own thing. And the whole time they're trying to give you wisdom, what are you saying to them? I know, I know, you talk to me like I'm stupid, like I don't know nothing. How many of you know I didn't know nothing? You think you know, until life begins to life. <laughs> what they say? When life start lifing, things hit different. Begin to accept the wisdom from people who have already walked the path or walked through life from a standpoint that you've never walked it, right? Begin to embrace that wisdom. You got two types of people. You got the type of person who can be told information understand the information being told and take heed. And then you have the type of person who can understand information, hear the information, understand the information, and say to themselves, I'm going to go see for myself. I was the latter. I wanted to go see for myself. I'm not saying that you have to go through a gory story. My gory story is something I don't even want to really magnify because it seems like nowadays when I look at relationships, young ladies are more attracted to the bad guy than they're attracted to the good guy. And it makes it hard for the good guy to be the good guy because you feel like you got to turn into somebody else in order to receive attention validation, respect. You want to be desired by someone. It's okay. Those are natural feelings. And you're supposed to want to feel that way at 16, 15, 16, 17, 18 years old. But what I'm telling you is never forget that there's an active enemy out here trying to influence your thoughts, which will influence your actions, 
which will influence your habits, which will influence your decisions and your character. Your character is who you are when nobody's watching. So when I looked into that mirror, I didn't know who I was. But when I came to church, I knew who they wanted me to be. So I knew how to do what? Put a mask on. What did, what the little, what's the football player name? Put it on. What is, yeah, I knew how to put it on. But I wasn't fooling nobody. Because real, what? Recognizes what? Real. But real really recognizes what? Fake. So you can put it on all you want to. But when you come in the presence of that real, oh, you ain't fooling nobody. They see straight through you. And yeah, we're still cordial. We're still, hey, love you. Good to see you. God bless you. Praying for you. Still going to always do that. But we know. Well, what sense is it going to do to be able to tell somebody who already feels like they know it all, right? What sense is it going to make to be able to try and tell you something? Because you know it all. So what's the best remedy for parents or mentors and things to do when you're like that? We back up. Clap one time if that makes sense. I wanted to just pose a question. Please. What, if anybody was willing to be honest, what are the, some of the reasons why you reject wisdom or why you reject the information when someone is trying to help you, be it your parents or your teachers or mentors? Why do you reject it? Mm. That's a good question. Anybody? It goes against what you want, even though you hear that what you want is going to give you the end result. Because you want what you want more than to do what's right. So what is it that you want to see for yourself? Yeah. You don't really believe? Sometimes I go with it, but sometimes I feel like maybe I could do something to change it so it won't end up like that. Give me an but example. Like that. Give um, me an example. Well... Like, well, boys, for example, if I'm messing with this boy and they say that he's bad news or whatever, but he treated me, like, different than he treat other girls, and I'm going to be like, well, maybe I'm going to change him or whatever, and then it end up bad. So most of the time it don't go well, but sometimes it do. Yeah. So with it going bad sometimes, or those times that, it, that you tried it your way and it still went bad, the next time another opportunity comes around, why would you still choose... I mean, I've been learning from it, so I don't do it no more. That's good. Okay. But I used to. It used to be bad. Okay. But now I learned my lesson. Do you remember how easy it was to get caught up in that emotion or get caught up in that cycle? Yes. Where it's like, and I tell people, one of the things that you cannot change is what? People. Other people. You can't. Constance thought she was going to be able to change oh, me. Yeah. Didn't you? I did. She thought she found she learned real quick. That was a quick lesson. You I understand what I'm talking about? Exception. She thought she was the exception. I thought I was the exception. She did. Because because it did feel different. And because I, I did love her. I see another young lady. I'm sorry. I Go see ahead. Another young lady who wanted um, to for me, it was just like when my mom was trying to tell me like, don't do this, don't do this. I was hearing from other family members that she was doing the same thing, and I guess in my head I just felt it was hypocritical to like come at me and you were doing worse than what I was doing. That's and a good point. I quickly learned that the reason she was telling me not to do this, not to do this, not to do that was because she done it. Exactly. Oh, exactly. <laughs> she already been through it with my sister. She already did it, got pregnant at 19, did uh -huh. it, been through it, then got pregnant with me and was trying to like stop both of us from like making right. mistakes that she made. But I felt in my head that it was like, right. why are you coming at me? Right. right. And I think, I think some of you may feel like why are you trying to get me from making mistakes? Because you're the one that tells me that mistakes help you learn and stuff like that. But it's like we're trying to help you avoid repeating the same mistakes. Mm -hmm. You're going to make mistakes. Yeah. Just don't. You don't have to repeat this particular. Exactly. Because once you do this, there are going to be other mistakes that come after this. But you ain't got to repeat this one. So I think if you guys just, if you could take that perspective as when we're teaching you guys and we're sharing information, 
is to help you avoid repeating the same Absolutely. mistakes. Absolutely. And I know you feel like you might not, it might not go that way, or like Danica said, you're like, I, I'm the exception. 9.999 times out of 10, yeah. it's, it's going to have a, a similar result. Absolutely. But it's like, if I can allow God to do something different in my life, I want to choose to hear, to, to obey, and to do something different, and then see how he moves in my life. Because you, you, that's how you go further faster. Yes, you're going to make mistakes. Yes, there are going to be times where you don't get it right. But just take heed to the ones where we're saying, hey, Abby, don't do this. Don't do this one. Right. You know, Davey, don't do this. Hey, let's not do that. Let's try it this way. And then let's see what happens when you do it this way. And then we'll deal with the mistakes that you make after having done it this way. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Clap on time if that makes sense. All right. Your parents aren't going to tell you the horrible details of their mess because teenagers have a tendency to, uh, what, what they say when you go to court, Use it against you. Uh, uh, you have a right to remain silent because whatever you say can and will be used against you in a court of this house, right? So they have a tendency not to tell you the details. I'm not like that in my house, in my house, my kids know the gory details, and I tell them the gory details because I don't care about them judging me because I'm totally not the man that I used to be. However, especially with my daughter, I want to put her up on game with what's out here. And she usually gets highly frustrated, not at what I'm saying, but at the fact that I'm so right. I'm like, why does that frustrate you? Because it's like, I don't want to know it all which is what we're talking about. I want to experience for myself, Dad. You had the experience. I'm like, okay, well, I'm just trying to be very upfront with you because it's like, if you know this is going to lead to this, you have to, Lord, give me the articulation. If you know that dealing with this boy is going to lead to a baby, and then going to lead to, because of his immaturity, not a husband, but a what? Baby, Baby daddy, right? Wouldn't you want to say or have enough sense to go, how would I be with a baby? Am I ready for that? How do I look at my friends or my, 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 my uh, 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 family members that have been in that situation? Do I want a husband or a baby daddy? Do I want to wait or do, you know, here's the thing that really gets them, curiosity. Mm -hmm. That curiosity, I just want to know for myself. Because all my friends make it seem like it's the move, right? It's like, man, the way you talk about it, man, it's like you should be a preacher, man. The way you, you're very articulate, the way you describe these other things. But when it, talks, when it comes to talking about other stuff, you seem pretty dumb. But when it comes to this stuff, man, you just seem to be like, a, uh, like Mozart. It's, it's like you're, you're like Picasso, man. You know how to put it together. You make it seem so intriguing and I'm interested. That's what sin does. It's candy on the blade. It it caters to your desires. Listen to me. It caters to your desires by way of what you see. When you see something, you know right away whether you're attracted to it or not attracted to it, right? When you hear something, you know whether you're going to put it on repeat or whether you're going to skip to the next song. How many of you have ever put on an album? It's not many, but how, how many of you have ever put on an album and listened to it all the way through? I have. It's not many. So when I'm listening to different albums, 80% of them, right? I'm like, next one, next one. No, nah, I don't like the beat. Next one, uh, not really her register. Next one, okay, I can rock with this one. And you got that one song out of the 14 that they dropped that you really like. Well, likewise, man, you, you, you're in here and you're, you're going through situations and you're just picking this one, this one, this one, this one. But in life, life isn't like listening to a record. In life, especially when you're not under the protection of your parents' home, 
Consequences hit different. You do something in my house, I'll take your phone, right? Go cut the grass. Well, you're going to do that anyway, but now you got, I'm going to give you some extra stuff to do with cutting the grass. And then get behind the fence and get all that brush out the way. Make sure you got on some pants because there's bugs out there and they're going to bite you. Here's some offspring. You're welcome. And a shovel. I need it done in two hours, right? But once you leave your house, the consequences hit different. I'm not taking your phone. No, you're not taking your phone. They're cutting your power off. They're not putting you on punishment and telling you uh, you can't go to the party. They're locking you up. It's not, uh, oh, I got a headache, and then mom comes in. Oh, well, take this, and then take this, and then you'll be better. No, you're going to the doctor, and they're going to diagnose you. It hits different. The payout is quicker. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Clap one time if that makes sense. That's not to put you in fear, but it's to put you at a place of understanding there's a reason why your parents are saying to you what they're saying to you. And if you're constantly going to be what I'm talking about in this message, a know-it-all, you're going to find yourself realizing real quick just how much you really don't know. See, we're not going to say, baby, well, if you go out there, it's going to be like this, and it's going to be like this, and you're going to be like this. How you know? Because I went through this, and I went through this, and I went through that, and I went. No, no. That's fear-driven. Nobody trying to put fear into you. But I'll tell you this. There's an active enemy, and the enemy is out here, and his only assignment is to steal, kill, and destroy. And he's not going to come in looking like some big monster with horns on and all this other stuff. No, he's going to look like your best friend. He's going to look like your favorite artist. Hmm? He's going to look like somebody you want to holler at. Are you hearing me? I've been deceived before. Trust me. I'm talking to you from a place of experience. I ain't just saying what I read in the book. I read the book, and it's accurate. But I lived it, too. I've made the mistakes. And I came through without the smell of smoke. I went through the fire, came out. I'm good. I don't even look like what I've been through. But I'm telling you, I'm screaming at you from a dead end. Turn around. Embrace the wisdom that they're giving you. It's okay not to know it all. It's okay to not get it right all the time. It's okay. It's okay to have a... a, a, a well, a curiosity about the future, but don't be so curious about the future that you miss today. Are you hearing me? Take it one day at a time. Relax. Breathe. Chill. Stop being so anxious. Why I got to stop being so anxious? Because the Bible says be anxious for nothing but through prayer and supplication. That's how you move. Clap one time if that makes sense. Number three. So number one was, it's good that you don't know everything because it keeps us humble. Number two, uh, it causes uh, us to take life one day at a time, which is, oh, that's just so powerful if you could learn to do that. Number three, it makes us kinder towards one another. How many of you have ever met someone that's just organically and genuinely just a kind person? The world looks at that person as what? You can say it. What, 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 what do they look at the kind person as? Huh? Who? Weak. Weak. I was having a conversation with a young lady the other day. Why is it, young ladies, I'm just talking to the young ladies, and then I want the men to think about the question that I'm asking them, and then I want you to answer it too, okay? You got me? Young ladies. Is there an epidemic going on with young ladies where they're attracted to the bad boy? It's a question. You have a, go ahead. No. No? Okay. Clap one time if you agree. That was a couple of claps. That was only a couple. That was a, <laughs> like three of them. literally saw. Clap one time if you disagree. Okay. So talk to me. Why does it seem like the girls want the bad boy? And when I, let me describe the bad boy. Can I describe the bad boy? The bad boy that, you know, 
they go into a party, they do something. I remember, remember we was uh, walking down to McNair Middle School. Mm -hmm. We was walking and this dude, you know, was uh, being extra overly funny, right? Overly funny. And I could tell that he was trying to get Constance's eye, right? We had to be like 14, 15. Yeah. Yeah, we had to be like 14, 15. So we're walking, it's like eight or nine of us. We're all walking together. And you got that one dude, I didn't really rock with him like that. I knew him, but we wasn't like, you know, he wasn't, we wasn't cool or whatever. We ain't kick it. You know, we ain't play video games together, right? So we walking and Constance laughs at everything. See, right? She literally laughs at everything. Key, 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 key. And every time this dude would make a joke, she would get the key, key, key in. You feel me? And I'm sitting there like, what you key, key, key in for? It ain't even that funny. And he noticed it. So he kept going with the joke, right? I'm walking, and I noticed what's happening. And he's right in the middle of getting ready to tell one of them corny little jokes he's telling, right? And I look at Constance getting ready to, it was like slow motion. Key, 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 key. I was like, oh, heck no. <gasps> Bro, hit, hit, do something, do something. Bro, what you hit me like that for? I looked over. Guess what she wasn't doing? Key, key, key in. No more key, yo, you ain't laughing at that, huh? It ain't funny. Mr. Eddie Murphy over here, you with your jokes. Some of you look at that story and it's like, oh, man, Pastor Ann hit that joker. Man, that wasn't a good thing. What if he had a gun? What if he would have shot me? It's very much so possible. He's in prison right now for murder. Yeah. At the time, that's the type of stuff that I was on. But why are girls attracted to that? I need to know. I was talking to a young lady and she said, because we're protected at home, but when we're out there, we want to feel protected. How many of you agree with that? One, two, clap, clap your hands if you agree with that. But why, though? I need, to, I need somebody that can articulate to me you why. Got, you got a young lady over Where? Y'all got to stand up. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Because the, the light is in my face, and I'm like, oh, who is that? All right, so, like, I really feel like it's like a social media thing. How old are you? I'm 16. Okay. okay. So it's like, you see Lil Baby, Jada Waiter, all of that. Who? It's like scammers and... Jada Waiter? You said like, Jada Waiter? Yes, yeah, Jada Waiter. That's her real name? No, but it's like, I don't know how to explain it. So she literally calls herself Jada yeah. Waiter. Yeah, Jada Waiter. But it's like... Hey, Mom, this is my fiancé, Jada Waiter. Go ahead. <laughs> it's ridiculous. But like, yeah, that's what you see on social media, so that's what you go towards. So you see somebody that's saying, oh, yeah, I'm skimming. I got some Balenciagas. I got some purple jeans. That's, that's who you're going to go to. Really? Yeah. Because it's... It's just what you see, I guess. What about the guy? Watch this. What about the guy that is on the basketball team, good, great athlete, right? 3.5 GPA. Don't really go to parties, but he'll go, but don't really like to smoke like that. Third degree black belt, right? You hear this? They laughing at it, bro. I see why young men feel like they gotta be a savage. But then, but then the girls hate when they get done wrong. Though. Right, because here's, on, here's what's on the other side, because I'm that guy. I, well, not, I'm not, I was that guy, was that guy. right? And what was the speech I gave you? You a oh, good girl. A good girl but I don't want to mess you up because I, I ain't trying to change. And if you stay around me, girl, it's going to be some serious. You hear me? Right? Her heart was broken. Like she had to go to counseling type broken. Right? I ain't got to, I mean, yeah. I talked to my mentor. Right. So what was that called? Counseling, key, key, keying it up <laughs> with the counselor. But you feel what I'm saying to you? I'm going to, that type of dude is going to break your heart. What if you knew 
even though you went toward the guy that was like that, if you knew he was going to break your heart, would you still be attracted to him? Yeah. <laughs> Hey, but you know what? She being honest. You being honest. But why though? I don't know. It's like it's attractive. Yeah, it's like what? What is it? It's like something you can't have, so you want it more. He got the book. Got you. Wait a minute. Say that again. It's something you want. You can't. You can't have, so you want it more. What do they call that? Um, there's a word for it. Uh, it's like a. Uh, it's some type of temptation, but it's a. Uh, Oh, oh, it's um, on the tip of my tongue. It's, um... Where's, where's Jalen? He would know. He don't know. He trying to figure out, uh, ironic help. Oh, um, it's, it's a, a, a guilty pleasure. A guilty pleasure. I need to teach on that, don't I? It's a guilty pleasure. It's the thing that I want that I know I'm not supposed to have. Just like with Eve. Eat of every tree in this garden but this one. What did Satan do? Did God say that you couldn't eat of every tree? Surely he knows that once you eat of this fruit that you'll be like a God. You'll be like him. Here's the key thing. They were already like him. Right? You'll be like a God knowing the difference between good and evil. See, she wanted that knowledge. And if you go back to that scripture that I just said, it ain't about the knowledge, it's about what? Love. It's about can love. I, can I inject? Go ahead, babe. Um, I'm just thinking, because I, I, I remember that feeling. And I'm going to tell you when it changed for me. It changed for me when I realized who I was mm -hmm. and what I was worth. Facts. So if you don't know who you are, then you're kind of out here just searching. You're trying to get what you feel like you're supposed to get or whatever you can get that seems like that's what I'm supposed to have because that's what everybody, like you said, on social media. Wow. At the time, it would have been on whatever we saw on TV. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? In TV, in the videos. Mm -hmm. That's what we saw. So that's what we desire. Right. But when, when you think about or when you start to get to know yourself, then you like, I know what I like. I know what I want. Think about food. Mm -hmm. Think about if you don't eat burgers. You know Kayla, for instance. Kayla, I don't eat red meat. I don't eat it. Hey, Kayla, now this one, this is a really, this, this is a good flavor. No, thank you. I'll take some cheese. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take some, uh, I don't know, vegan something. Why? Because I know what I like. So you cannot, you cannot try to tempt me to take something I know I don't want. Because I know what I want. But when you don't realize who you are and what you want, then you're willing to kind of sample out here. And a lot of times we get out here and that's why we say, these times when you're in high school, like middle school is kind of like you're figuring it out. High school, you really connecting some dots about who you're going to be as a young adult. But if you don't know that, then you kind of, you biting off of everybody trying to put it together. And what happens is you end up, by the time you graduate, you end up this broken person, this broken teenager, lost in the sauce. And then you take that into your adulthood and the cycle continues. But we say this time is an, is an opportunity for you to really get to know yourself and figure out what you want. That's why you hear your parents, I know it sounds corny, and I tell my kids this even to this day. I'm gonna I'm a allow you to do the things that you're doing. I'm going to allow you to do that. But I want you to be mindful that I'm not in agreement because I feel like you need to be focusing on you. You need to be figuring oh, out what Chaz, you know. Turn the main lights on. Go ahead. You need to be figuring out what you know, what you like, what you desire, right? That's what we should be focused on. Not trying to bite off of what you see. You need to be, what's your name? Angel? 
Angel, you need to be focused on Angel. Right. Because what Kyle and and and, and Jeremiah you just and making up names? Rodney them. Yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's some old names. <laughs> they are. But but what they what they like and what they want from you mm -hmm. may not that may not be what, what you desire in life. Me and Anthony was having a conversation the other day. He was like, Yeah, you you liked it when I was all bad. And I was like, I didn't. I did not. Cause, because if you recall, I used to tell you, you need to stop. Right. You need to get your life together. As a matter of fact, at one point when he broke up with me, um, he broke up with me at one point, and then after that, I told him, I'm not taking you back until you get your life together. Right. I, I need you to make different decisions because I'm not impressed with you robbing folks and slapping folks. That don't impress me. Right. Why? Because I know I'm, I'm a young lady of standards. Mm -hmm. I respect people. I love people. You know what I'm saying? I knew that part about me. There were some other things that I did not know, but I knew that part. So that is not acceptable to me. So if you're going to try, try to impress me, you need to impress me with good behavior. Right. Does that make sense? So I'm saying to you, young lady. But that's not the cool thing, though. It may not be, it may not be the cool thing, but you think about it again. If you knew he was going to break your heart, because you hate the heartbreak. Oh, my God, if I would have known this, then you hate the heartbreak, but you don't want to do the work to avoid the heartbreak. So you got to pick one. You know what? Who in here acts like you, you can act? We're getting ready to do a short film for the conference, and I, we, we got to cast some parts. I already know the parts, and I already know the characters, but I, I need some... I, I need some people who can really act. So raise your hand if you can really act. All right, do me a favor and see Chastin right after service and make sure we get your information, man. Because, uh, you know, I think it's going to be something that'll, that'll bless you. It's going to be really dope. Uh, just a sidebar, we are at 830 students registered for the conference so far. Make some noise for that. It's going to be amazing. We got people coming from all around the world. So if you hadn't registered, just go to the... Uh, front desk or pull out your phones right now, right now. and you could text Grace Life to 51555. It's all free. We're not charging a dime. So go ahead and register, get yourselves registered for that. I want to go to the scripture uh, real quick. Uh, 1 Corinthians 4 and 3, New Living Translation, but I'm going to do verse 3 and 4, okay? So that's 1 Corinthians 4 and 3. Because number three talks about it makes us kinder to one, to one another. So 1 Corinthians 4 and 3. Let's see. As for me, it matters very little how I might be evaluated by, by you or by any human authority. I don't even trust my own judgment on this point. My conscience is clear, but that doesn't prove I'm right. It is the Lord himself who will examine me and decide. That's Bible. I ain't making this stuff up. But I need to know from a God standpoint, do you feel like sometimes you got to compromise to get, you know, uh, what's the uh, song on Disney? There's a girl that I like. Right. Do you feel like you got to turn into somebody you're not in order to get the girl sometimes? Fellas, be honest with me. Who want to talk to me about it? I know the girls are very articulate and they want to talk about it, but fellas, who's in, which one of you lines are bold enough to say right. the truth? That part. Hmm? Raise your hand if you're going to talk to me. Nobody? It's unfortunate. It's, a, it's unfortunate that... It's on the tip of Dave's tongue. He just, I don't know if I should say it's, it. It's unfortunate that you feel like... <laughs> so I don't want that smoke. ...in bondage to be honest. You know what I'm saying? Like you feel like expressing your feelings is is lame or shows sign of weakness that's, that's i'm trying to so help you we're trying to help you because i've seen good kids turn into savages and the thing about a good kid that tries to be a savage is that once you get around real savages it's dangerous for you and two it makes you go to ridiculous extremes mm -hmm. to try and prove yeah that you are a true savage, yeah. right? 
it, that's not your that's not your core. The yeah. core of you that goes against the core of you. So you go to the to the most outlandish extent trying to be in front of a re of somebody who really just not good on the right. inside. Prison is filled with those type of people. Yes, it is. And they don't even belong there. They end up going there, becoming somebody's, uh, you know, it's just bad. Oh my. It's bad. Because when you get around a real savage, and here's the thing, you find yourself trying to become a real savage. So you're out there trying to do real savage things. And that's not even you, but you get stuck in it so long, you begin to own its identity. And that's how you go, man. Zachary wasn't like that in school. Now they call him Big Z. <laughs> Big Z. <laughs> but he wasn't even like that in school. What happened? He was making straight A's. Middle school, elementary school, middle school, high school. After he graduated, it seemed like he just became a savage. Is you know? it really? I'm sorry, babe. Is it really not one young man in here willing to be honest about your feelings? Young men, I guess, you know, leaders ask the right question. Young men, do you feel like the girls are after the bad boys? See, it's how you, you got to, you got to, hey, ironic. Hey, you just got to give it to them the right way. You know what I'm talking about? Huh? It's, you feel like what? You're always having to prove something to a girl that has already fixed in her mind she wants a certain type. So the one that's staying out of the way, staying out of trouble, getting good grades, uh, you know, obeying what their parents say, like if the parents say they got to be in the house at nine, oh man, I got to get off my phone and different things like that, right? The one that ain't trying to sneak and get on the phone afterwards, that dude is lame. Lame and childish, you need to grow up. So a 16-year-old girl is calling you childish and that you need to grow up. But you don't know that at her house, if her roommate, why your dirty drawers on the floor? Get your butt up, get out there and clean something up. And you smell like yesterday. Did you take a bath? You don't see that part. Because just like on social media, when girls are on the phone with you, they're trying to give you their best version or if you watch sports, they're trying to show you their highlight reel. Does that make sense? They're not. It's very rare that you find a girl that keeps it real, which is why I'm on my, my children about, man, just keep it 100 with people. Don't try to be something you're not. Because there's always going to be that testing day, right? <laughs> it's always going to be that testing day when they meet your parents and they begin, well, you know, such and such is like this and such and such is like that. And the description that they're given don't match up with what your parents know. And your parents are like, wait, wait, I'm sorry. What did you just say? That's the worst feeling in the world to be found out by on a lie that you told a friend in front of their parents. And you just come in, you just come in and you're just talking about what you guys talk about. Yeah, because I know like when he was younger, he was doing such and such. And then the mama like, what you just say? He was doing what? Hmm? Who? Like, for example, when I first met Constance, right? <laughs> I don't have a middle name. I don't. It's Anthony Adams. But I always wanted one. <laughs> so when I met Constance, what's your middle name? I was like, Shock him. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. Anthony. Anthony Shaquem Adams, right? So she calling me Sha Kim, Sha, you know, I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's what I was going for, right? She called me, I said something crazy, and you know when you, when you do something crazy, the girl wants to call you by your full government, right? <laughs> so she goes, Anthony Sha Kim Adams. Anthony. My mama was cooking, she was like, what you say? Sha Kim. Sha Kim? <laughs> she probably cussed. Who the <laughs> is Sha Kim? <laughs> and she was like, Anthony. That N-word name ain't no shock him. You told that girl your name, what you be, you just be lying? Baby, don't believe him, he's a liar. I'm like, dang, mo. Hey, so what I hit her with, I always wanted it to be shock him. Highlight reels. You gotta be careful because I tell people all the time, 
I tell my kids this. It's one thing when you lie to other people. It's a scary thing when you begin to lie to yourself. Hear me with every piece of understanding that you have. It's one thing when you lie to other people. It's a very scary thing when you begin to lie to yourself. It's even scarier when you begin to believe the lies you've told yourself. Are you here? Clap one time if that makes sense. Be mindful of that. Keep it real with people because everything in the dark comes to the light. I know y'all got grandmothers or somebody old that done told you that before, right? You know where they got it from? Bible. The Bible. It's all there. Amen. So what was it? Uh, number three, it makes us kinder towards people. Not knowing everything keeps us kinder towards people. Uh, it, it allows us to take uh, life one day at a time, and um, it keeps us humble. Number four, the last one, it presses us to trust the one that does know it all. Amen. Ooh, it's just something. See, it's different between knowledge and wisdom. Mm -hmm. Big difference, right? It presses us to trust the one that knows it all. A very mature thing when you understand the power of going to God for wisdom. Very powerful. That's how you know you're beginning to mature emotionally. When you can begin to go, you know, one of the most powerfulest things, people, I get youth pastors or other ministers that ask me all the time, why do you ask questions to the students in service? What if they ask you a question that you don't know? And he was very animated when he asked me this. And I came to him with the same, I met his level of animation. I said, I tell them I don't know. He said, oh, I was like, yeah. Long story short, I never talked to that minister again. <laughs> just kind of weird. Gave me a little creepy stuff. You know, good person. Just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's all that whole, that little exchange right there. You know, I'm, you know, I'm really an introvert, right? So it's like when I'm out talking to people and different things like that, that's me trying to step over into being an extrovert. But when it's weird like that, oh, no, you'll probably never hear from me again. Are you kidding me? No. I'm done. Anybody else out there like that? Am I the only one? Clap one time if, if that makes sense. <laughs> All right. So it presses us to trust the one that does know it all. Lord, I trust you. I am not one of those preachers that get up here and say, oh, man, I'm the expert on this, and I'm the expert on that, and I'm the expert on this, and I'm the expert on that. No. If I don't know, I ain't going to talk about it. Or if you ask me a question that I don't have the answer to, you know what I'm going to tell you? Come back next week, I'll have that answer. And I'm definitely going to go research, study, understand. What if you still don't find it? Then I come, I need more time. There's nothing wrong with saying, I don't know. But you allow the pressures of this world to pressure you into saying something just to be saying something. How many of you have ever ran into somebody that just said something to be saying something? It's like you don't even believe what you just said. You, didn't, you don't even sound convincing when you say it to me. You know, like ladies, ask a young man, <clears throat> so why do you like me? Watch how he responds. And if you have just a little bit of intelligence, you'll go, you don't know me at all, do you? What's my favorite color? When's my birthday? How many pounds did I weigh when I was born? I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> What's my favorite food to eat? What's my favorite color? Huh? What size shoe do I wear? And I need you to know this because if we ever get, if you ever give gifts, I like shoes. What's, what size shoe do I wear? Fellas, you want to know if a girl is real? Ask the right questions. I tell my kids this all the time. Leaders ask the right questions. It's not what you, it's not how you ask it all the time. Sometimes it's just what you ask. Like I could ask a question the wrong way and it gets no response. I asked y'all the same question in a different way. <laughs> hey, yeah, boy, for real. Oh, my mama, boy, oh, God, boy, for real. Ask the right question. So, fellas. 
You want to know if a girl is really feeling you? Ask the right question. Y'all know what the right questions are, right? <laughs> Clap one time if you know what the right questions are. <laughs> See, I knew. That was a trick. That was a test. <laughs> How you know what the right questions are? You're only 17, 16, 15 years old. Who, whoever clapped their hands, tell me what the right questions are. Go. You clapped your hands. I saw you. Kaden. Give him the mic. Right here. Right here, say. Right here. Right here. Right here. Right here. Right here. Right here. Tell me what the right questions are, big dog. Because he may know. Right here with the glasses. Tell everybody your name, man. And how old are you? His mic not on. Hold up, they got it. Is it on? Hit, hit, tap it. Okay, use this one. It's the white mic. My name is Asa. Who? Asa. Asa? I like that. What's up, big Asa? Oh, my mama. Asa. 17. Okay. okay, so you got a little age on you. What's the right questions, big dog? <laughs> huh? No, 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 no. Let me make sure I give you context so you know what type of questions, all right? Y'all have been seeing each other for about three to four months, and you're trying to gauge to see how well she knows you because out of her mouth, she's giving you very surface indications that she's really feeling you, right? And you've kept it 100 with her. You follow? So to see if she's really feeling you, what questions do you ask? My birth, like, you gotta ask her what's my birthday. You just heard me say that. It's true though. Okay, so your birthday, okay. And then, <clears throat> mother's name. Your mother's name, okay. Man, you slipping. You, you pause this long on a, on, with a girl. She'd be like, I'm going to call you right back. <laughs> hey, my kids be walking around with the, on the phone, on speakerphone and stuff. I'd be like, man, they ain't got no game, bro. I'm like, man, what you talking about, bro? Man, you know, shut up. That, who else? Uh-uh, you, Katie, you, you, uh, clapped. <laughs> I know. What what you gonna ask, big dog? Like, I would just ask, like, first off, since we're like keeping a hundred with each other, I would be like, what best describes you? Like, tell me about yourself. Like, what would make you feel more comfortable around me? What do I need to do to improve to make you happy? He like, see. Well. <laughs> hey, what my man say? Really? <laughs> okay, that's. Ladies, that was pretty impressive, wasn't it? How many times has a guy asked you that doggone question? Three? Oh, really? Really? Was that the same guy or three different guys? <laughs> okay, it's okay. It's okay. Okay, so. <laughs> she said, was it the, that was a good, that was the right question to ask, babe. She said, was it the same guy or three different guys? She said, three different guys. But what that says is, you've been vulnerable. Three different people know you and you're not with them anymore. That's not a chump off or anything like that because we're not talking about like physically. We're talking about just, you gotta know your worth, ladies and gentlemen. You gotta know your worth. Everything about you shouldn't be revealed so soon. You ever found somebody that will talk to somebody that overshares? Clap one time if you, talk, if you spoke, had a conversation. And then after the conversation, you're like, that was a bit much. We're not even cool like that, but uh, okay. Weird. <laughs> if you like me, I'm like, I'm not talking to this person anymore. <laughs> okay. In this one, I need you guys to be more mindful with who you are, who God created you to be. I'm not telling you to walk around on guard all the doggone time, but walk around on guard. Guard your peace. Guard your joy. Huh? Guard your sound mind. These are gifts God has given you. He said his peace he leaves with you. It's a gift. Guard it. Something expensive that you own, you want to protect it. You're not, like a 
your, uh, not your Wi-Fi password, but the code to your phone. Do you just give that to anybody? Are you kidding me? Now, I do see people doing that. I'd be like, you guys are so weird. I'm going to give you access to my Instagram so you can know that I'm being faithful to you. Shout out on my mama, boy, for real. Hey, hey, you know I love you. You know I rock with you, boy. You got everything. You know everything about me. Oh, my mama. Oh, God. Boy, you know the real aggressive Atlanta folks. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my mama, man. You know everything about me, boy. Oh, my mama, boy, for real. You know everything about me. I gave you the code to my dog on Instagram. All right? That y'all sharing uh, Apple IDs. iCloud. Huh? Y'all share lo Oh, they share location too? She said, yeah, with the head nod. She ain't just say, yeah. She said, yeah. <laughs> Fellas, y'all share your location? You got to, like, trust them, though. Got you. So you've done it, but it's not like a common practice. Okay. Fellas, right? Dude, we need to talk about this in Lion's Den. Y'all sharing your location? We, I just went the whole type, the topic of this message, my title is, I don't know everything and it's okay. <laughs> y'all sharing your location? How old are you? 14? How old are you? 17? Okay, yeah, you about to, you, you at that threshold where you, you know what I'm saying? You about to graduate, right? Next year. You, but you feel what I'm saying? Dave, you just changed my world, man. <laughs> he talking about, I don't do that. I don't do that. Oh, uh, I don't do that. <laughs> Kingston, you share your location, boy? No. You better not. No. You, be you better not. You better not. White brothers, y'all share your location? No. I ain't hear Jeremiah say nothing. Jeremiah. You share your location, boy. You better not. He pointing to Jonathan. Hold on, hold on, hold on. And the hush came over the crowd. Hush. You said what? So, how long would you have to be with said female in order to share your location with them? Good question. Okay. That's pretty solid, especially in teenage world. Right, because who's staying together that long these days? Nine months, that's, I mean, that was, that was my type of time. What, what, uh, here's the right question. What's, the, what's a long relationship? Put a time on a long relationship. How long is a long relationship for teenagers? Eight months. Eight months? You ain't getting his location, girl. You huh? just ain't. You said what? A year and some change, okay. Six months? Five months? Six months. Six? Three years? <laughs> hey, 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 the whole crowd, the whole crowd said three years. But legit, me and Anthony was together three years before he dumped me. No Absolutely. We, we got hey, together straight up. when I was 12, he dumped me when he turned 16, I was 15. Three years, legit. So, okay, so that was a That's good... That's why I was so sad. Hey, so look, to talk to my mentor. So look, so that was a good question. Here's the next question. So I, I think the majority that I heard was six months to a year. Clap one time if that makes sense. Clap one time if you agree. Okay, so six months to a year, is that enough time for you to start sharing details of yourself? Or... Is, is that enough time for you to become vulnerable with this person? Hold up. Say what now? So something is happening where you have more of a connection. Kayla? I got you. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> I forgot. 
And you know what? I forgot about that. So what she said was, even before the relationship, y'all was talking for like a month or two before y'all even, so technically it's like a year and three months. Girl, bye! <laughs> this is so interesting. I think we need to do a, a relationship type of session at the conference. I, I really do think we need to do that. You so, so right. How do you how do you how do you differentiate the two? How do you know the difference between somebody that's just trying to be friends with you and some ooh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hold up, Holy Spirit just gave me something. How many of you ladies have looked at somebody as bro or friend? And they look at you like, there's a girl that I like. <laughs> or vice versa. Right? Like, fellas, you got that friend. She's a girl. You know, she's like little sis. But she's like, every time you start talking to her, she, she's a, ear, a listening ear. She's listening to all of your problems when you're going through things with your girlfriend. And you could start picking up signs if you're really looking for it. Most of y'all don't pick them up. But <laughs> the signs are, I think you should really leave her. I mean, she just doesn't treat you like the man that you are. <laughs> you're right. She don't treat me like the man that I am. She don't. She don't. Wait, what? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? How many of you have ever been in that situation? Because it's like, it's hard to differentiate. I don't think young people, and it's not a bad thing, it's not because you're stupid, you're immature. You ain't even lived life yet. You ain't experienced life yet. So it's hard to differentiate a friendship compared to I'm attracted to you. Because attraction don't take nothing but you seeing somebody, you can see somebody, you can say, okay, he's attractive, but you don't like him. But the minute he says, hey man, you cool, you're cool. You're cute. You're cute. I guess we talking then. <laughs> how, do you, how do you differentiate? How do you tell the difference? Go ahead. I thought I was dating this dude for two weeks. Oh, man. And then on the third Wait a minute. Week, Wait a minute. You were in a full-fledged relationship a with this dude for two weeks? For two weeks. And tell me what happened. Here's, here's the thing. <laughs> He asked me out, and I was like, I thought we were already dating. Wait a minute. After the two weeks, he asked you After out? After the two weeks, he asked me out, and I thought, we were already dating. He was like, no, we weren't, but I thought you asked me out before. No, I didn't. So we ended up dating for five months, and then I really, and he blocked me randomly for no reason. Unblocks me two months later. We get back together. Unblo I block him, and we never talked again, and it's been two months. You know what that sounds like? <laughs> Toxic. Y'all, the whole time y'all together, y'all blocking each other. You with times. the dude and he don't even know he with you. It was, it was just two times. Here's my point. Here's my point. Y'all listen up. There are seasons for everything. The grass begins to grow in a certain season. Fruit begins, the ground begins to yield fruit. Trees begin to yield fruit in a certain season. Why don't you guys think that relationships have a certain season? I use this example all the time. If you take an uh, apple can be very de deceiving because they can look ripe unless you know what you're looking for. And when you pull that apple off the tree before it's ready or before it's ripe and you bite into it, what does it give you? a bitter taste. Likewise with life. When you start stepping into things before it's season, it's going to yield to you a bitter experience. And that bitter sometimes can change your life. To some people, just for the love of appearances, you ever seen somebody eat something that's nasty and eat it just because you bet them to eat it? They keep eating that bitter experience just to try and show or prove to people, oh, yeah, it's good. I'm good. We good. See, I told you it wasn't that bad. 
yeah, man, the junk good in the mug. Or uh, what's the thing where they do the hot challenge? The junk ain't hot. I remember Jalen did that. <laughs> he couldn't even talk, bro. He, he couldn't even talk. Him and Tyler did it. They was trying to eat it. This junk ain't hot. Junk. I think Shaq did it. Shaq was eating the, uh, uh, it was some type of chip or something. Remember that? He was eating the chip. This junk ain't hot. This junk ain't hot. Oh, you making a face. I ain't making no face. That's all pride. You're just trying to prove something for a sense of a point. But this is your life that we're talking about. This ain't no chip. This ain't chips and dip. This your life. You work more than a chip, ain't you? Huh? Your parents sacrifice so much that you can have things and be things and different things like that for a reason. You, 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 you. It's more than just views and likes and shares and attention. You're worth more than that. You know that, right? You do know that, right? Don't be moved by the forms and fashions of this world, the superficial fashions of this world, the popular thing. You hear me? Learn to live your life. Lord, what, are you, what did you create me to be? That's the right question. That's the right question. Lord, what is your will for my life? I know what I'm out here doing, but it just don't feel right. Every time I try to come over here, it's a bitter experience. Every time I try to do this, it's a bitter experience. She broke up with me. She broke up with me. And then the girls that I think are really pretty, I don't even want to date pretty girls because all of them have this certain expectation. So I'm going to come down and I'm going to find me someone that's less attractive and I'm going to settle for this because... You It begins to mold and shape your thinking, your mentality. Ladies, you begin to settle for something so less than what God has for you. You hear me? Y'all got to be mindful out here. Life is not a game. And it is not re a respecter of age. It don't care how old you are or how young you are. The enemy don't care nothing about how young you are. He's going to try and bring things your way to try and ruin you at a very young age. Sometimes it comes by way of your family members. Sometimes it comes by way of people that you've let in closer than where they should be, which is why I tried to teach you guys on the three levels of relationship. Inner court, outer court, holies of holies. Why are you hearing me? Clap one time if that makes sense. So that's my message for the day. At the end of the day, it's okay not to know it all. Quit saying out your mouth, I'm not a know-it-all, but acting like a know-it-all. It's okay. Knowledge is cool, but it's not the thing that the church is built up off of. Learn how to love, but the first person that you learn how to love is who? You. You. Some of you treat other people better than you treat yourself. Huh? Think about that. Leaders ask themselves the right question. Ask yourself a question. Why do I do this? When, at what point in my life did I start moving this way? At what point in my life did things begin to shift? I'm talking to this dude. He's very disrespectful. He was, he's disrespectful. In a playing way. How many ladies, and I'm going to put this, ladies, how many have ever had a dude that's aggressive with you, but then goes, I'm just playing. Clap one time. Stop. He's showing you something. And you're afraid to tell your parents because you know better and they've taught you better. And the last thing you want to hear is what? I told you so. That's how the enemy isolates, not just young ladies, but young men too. Dad, I did something. What'd you do? She was in my face and, 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 and she kept yelling at me. She kept yelling at me. She was pointing in my face. She was pointing in my face and, and, and dad, I hit her. You did what? I know, Dad, I know. No, you play that in your head 
So as a result, you don't go and tell him what happened. So who's left to deal with you? The world. What does that include? Her brothers. One of her brothers is a high ranking gang member. He ain't playing the radio about his baby sister because that's how his dad raised him to be. Or if his dad ain't there, his uncle, his dad's brother raised him to be. <laughs> or if he ain't there, the cousin, the, it, the list goes on and on. You got to be mindful out here, y'all. Know who you are. Know who God created you to be so you don't go out here and try to create this persona of yourself that ain't going to do nothing but get you in a lot of trouble. Amen? You learned something today? If you learned something, make some noise for Jesus. Can we get like two people to tell us what they're leaving? Yeah, what are you leaving here with? Leaving here with what? What did you take from the message? Just two people. You we got one in the back. I think a mic is on back there where y'all uh, shuffling. I learned the paper. that not to be a know it all the time, that even when your parents are trying to explain something or trying to help you see uh, your future, they know what your future looks like and they see your potential to listen to them and take a step back and not always be in yourself and think that you know better when they know better than you because they've lived their life before. Mm, that's good. Michaela, right here in the front. Mr. Bond. Raise your hand. Praise God. Well, I learned that um, leaders. <laughs> it was just on, wasn't All it? Right. The one that we just muted. The white one. The white one. Okay, here we go. So yeah, um, I learned that leaders ask the right questions. Leaders ask the right questions. Good. That's a good one to know, man. Especially when you're getting ready to cross over that threshold into adulthood. You know, leaders ask the right questions. That's when it comes to a job, interviews, what type of job you're going into, what type of relationship you're getting into, what type of class you're going to take, what type of career path you're going to take. Ask the right questions. If you don't know the right questions, the Bible says there's wisdom in a multitude of counsel. Ask somebody else that you trust. Got it? Who else? Ain't nobody else. Y'all made noise. Y'all clapped your hands like you learned something. Tell me what you learned, doggone it. Right over here. Shoot. <laughs> here we go. What you got, big man? Honor your parents because you, okay, so honor your parents. Reason why is just because, like, they know what you, that you, you're you going through right now. Mm -hmm. And they're really trying to help you out so you can be better than them. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to share something with you. The the worst, the, one, of the, one of the pet peeves of a young person is, to be wrong. Clap one time if you agree. Who wants to be wrong? Who wants to be corrected? But see, your parents know certain things about you that you're not mindful of. See, how you treat your room right now will be how you handle your bills once you leave. I could tell that you was in this room. How can I tell that you was in this room? You left your stuff all over the floor. You left this all over. The, all of that stuff speaks to us. It's not just cleaning the room. It's more than just cleaning the room. I want to see how you connect the dots in life. Your parents want to see how you connect the dots. They want to see how, how you move with the small things. Why do the small things matter? It's like they're making a mountain out of a molehill. It's not that. But that TV back there, if you walk up on it when there's a picture on it and you get real close to it, what will you see? Pixels. What are pixels? Small dots. Billions of dots that come together to form a picture. So your parents want you to have a successful life. I want you to be, what do parents tell you they want you to be? Better than me. As a father, that's my heart's desire for my boys and my daughter. I, I, I wish I could just open my chest and show you. That's my heart's desire. 
not just for them, but for you guys as well. I want you to be better. I don't want you to have to go down this gory story or this hood movie <laughs> to arrive at a good place. You ain't got to do that. All that says is you're hard-headed and you don't know how to listen. I'm, I'm at the point now where I don't even like sharing my testimony because people glorify the mess more than they glorify w the rest. <laughs> He's not even, I'm, I'm a preacher, ain't I? You understand? They glorify the stuff I did and not the things I'm doing. Because the things that I'm doing, so what do you do for a living? Oh, I'm, I'm a youth pastor. Yeah, but like, what, but yeah, 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 but uh, like, uh, what like, do you do? but what do you do? You ever met somebody from Baltimore, they, all, they say, do like, do. What do you do? You know, what do you do? You know. Look, I mentor young people. That's what I do. Oh, you know, then they come to my home or come and see things and I'm like, you got to do more than just what you, no, this is what you do. So what did you do? Oh, yeah, I like that story better. You was a pimp? You was a drug dealer? You used to rob people? You ever killed anybody? That's the main question. I'm like, what is wrong with you? But I don't even like sharing it because... People like to glorify the horror story. Why? It almost killed me. You're not hearing what I'm saying to you? I hated myself. I got, I don't have enough fingers to count how many times I tried to kill myself. It wasn't fun. Yeah, but when you slapped that dude, Pastor Ant, when you slapped him, didn't it feel good? Yeah, it did. To my flesh. And then to my ego, too, because I knew the girl that I was chasing after saw that I didn't take no mess from nobody. And there was a piece of her that felt protected, right? But it's, like the Bible says, a way that seems right, but leads you to destruction. I've been a youth pastor for 14 years. 14 years now, I've been a youth pastor. Since, well, no, since 2013. So what's this? How many years is that? Who got good math? That's 10. Oh, so for you. Well, I've been in youth ministry for 14 years. I've been a youth pastor for 10. And in those 10 years, every home going that I do or funeral that I do has been for a young person who has either sat in my office, sat in one of, uh, sat in some of the seats that you're sitting in now, and I tell them the truth. But the thing about it is I can't change people. I have to trust that God loves you more than I do. And I got to trust that you're going to make the right decision when the time comes. But please remember that there's an active enemy trying to kill you trying to destroy you, and he does it by using dupes, <laughs> ways that seem right. He likes to tempt you through flattery. Oh, you think I'm cute? Oh, you like my swag? Don't you, don't you get tired of your mama talking to you? Man, I know, I know it's crazy, man, get on my nerve. He tries to tempt you through aggravation, frustration, sick and tired of being sick and tired. You would think y'all had full-time jobs or something. <laughs> he tries to tempt you through those things to eradicate you. He's on a path to exterminate you, and you don't even know it. Why? Because he's hiding in plain sight. 
He's not this big, scary guy. He looks like your friend. He looks like your family member. He hides in plain sight. Do you know the enemy when he comes? That's the right question. The next question is, God, what's your will for my life? A lot of you don't want to ask that question because you're so fixated on what your will for your life is. And you feel like his will won't match up with what you desire. That's the truth. How you know, Pastor Ant? Because I was your age once. That's the difference between me and you. I've been each and every one of y'all's age. None of you have made it to my age yet. Message. You hear me? Clap one time if that makes sense. Father God, we just thank you, Lord God, for this message. I pray that it has pierced through the hearts of these young people and will sustain in their minds so that as they leave here, even today, and they're tempted to get back on their phone and finish that conversation, get back in that DM and send that pic. I declare, Lord God, that your love rests, rules, and reigns in their spirit, in their body, and in their soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. If you're out there today and you hadn't accepted Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, one of the best decisions that you can make as a human being is to accept Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. Listen to me. People do not go to hell for sin. They go to hell for rejecting Jesus. After you accept Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, and that being the best decision that you've ever made, the next best decision that you can make is to commit to a life of renewing your mind. How many times am I supposed to renew my mind? Sometimes I got to do it 30 times a day just to remain sane. What does renewing your mind look like? I value God's word over the words that I hear on a daily basis. So if the words that I hear on a daily basis don't line up with his words, it's easy for me to spot a lie, to spot an imposter, and to spot the right way for me. There's a scripture in the Bible that talks about letting peace rule like an umpire, calling those things that are safe and calling those things that are out. That's the life that I choose to live. So if you're out there and you hadn't accepted him as your Lord and personal Savior, Constance is about to lead you in a prayer. I just want you to repeat after my lovely wife of 19 years. Woo! Woo! We're about to pray. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Go, get saved. Go ahead. Repeat this prayer after me. Say, Heavenly Father, I acknowledge and admit that I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. I ask you to come into my heart, be my Lord. Be my Savior, be my God. Teach me your ways so that I can reflect you to the world. I love you and I acknowledge you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you just said that prayer, then we're going to make some noise for you. Welcome to the body of Christ. Uh, if you could, we have a gift for you. If you could text... Uh, I'm saved, one word, to 51555. We have a digital download that we want to put in your hands. If you don't have a church home, hey, Constance and I are on our campaign. We want to be a youth pastors. If your parents don't have a church home, hey, Dr. Dollar and Pastor Taffy are on a campaign. They want to be your pastors. Let us shepherd you, not just you, but your whole family. You understand? You have to learn the things of God so that you can understand them better. Amen? So... Again, July 13th through the 15th, mm -hmm. Grace Life Youth Conference, homecoming. I'm super excited about it. Just off of the numbers that we've gotten so far, this whole bottom row is going to be full. So we may have to pull out the bleachers. I so much look forward to that because it's been such a long time. It's been since, what, 2019 since we had a conference? Mm -hmm. Man, I got my bro Chandler Bailey coming, Sipo Malanga, he's going to be here. We've got some uh, artists that's going to be walking through. Ty Tribbett is going to be walking through the building saying what's up and dapping y'all up with his new songs. Uh, 
new, 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 everything you, new, new. Y'all know Ty Tribbett? Clap one time if you know Ty Tribbett. All right, cool, 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 cool. Uh, we also have some other artists that's going to be coming through. But again, we're going to be shooting a short film, and it's going to be dope. So again, if you raised your hand and said that you act. Chester, where you at? Where's Chaz at? By the table. By the what? By the table. What table? The foot snack table. Oh, hey, Chit Chat. That's Chit Chat. Raise it. Come up a little bit so they know who you are. Mm -hmm. That's Chit Chat. That's one of my guardian angels. Her and my wife take care of me so well as far as making sure my brain stay right. Uh, but make sure that you get with her uh, if you're interested in uh, being casted uh, for this short film entitled For the Love of Likes. It's going to be dope. I'm super excited. The daddy's going to be directing it. Uh, Darnell's going to be directing it. Uh, my bro, Brian Lane, is going to be DP on set. Me and Alyssa are going to be doing our thing with it. Um, I'm excited about it. Super excited about it. It's going to be super dope. So, again, we're looking for actor actors. Okay? So make sure that you get your information to them. But if you have not uh, registered for the Grace Life Conference, text Grace Life to 51555 today to register. And I'm going to be <clears> grabbing <throat> some of y'all. You know, in between Sundays, I'll be grabbing, well, on on Sundays, I'll be grabbing you guys to just record little, you know, promo tidbits. I like to see y'all faces. We can do it. I mean, I can jump in front of a green screen and do it, but I would prefer that you guys do it. So if I grab you and I say, come record, just work <laughs> with me, okay? Just work with me. Babe, you ready to go get something to eat? I'm ready. I'm hungry. So we're going to walk off the stage and then walk up out of here? Oh, that this is him giving instruction. No, I'm just asking. Oh, no, I'm saying this is this is him letting you guys know that we will not be in the back. We about to go, man. 19 years, man. It's a long time. It's been good. It's been good. But it wasn't always good, was it, babe? It wasn't. But it, it's great now. Come so on. We're Come not, on. We're not going to focus on what was. We're going to focus on what we're doing. Upward and onward, right? <laughs> Come on. Let's go be upward and onward. <laughs> let's go. This is so who coming up next? <laughs> Jalen. Y'all make some noise for Jalen. Amen. 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 Y'all giving up for the <clears throat>